Alright, so today we're going to be doing a carburetor clean on a Honda EX1000. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove these four screws here. That'll give you access to the carburetor. Now you pull off this whole assembly. And you can see here's the Venturi of the carburetor. So for further diagnosis, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of fuel down the venturi of the carburetor. What this will do is send fuel into the engine, and the engine should start up and die. Alright, so I've just put a tiny bit of fuel into the venturi of the carburetor. We'll give it a pull and see if she starts and dies. And sure enough, she did. Alright, so we're now going to remove these two 8mm nuts. Alright, so you're going to want to remove the plate just like this. And just let it hang. Before we remove the carburetor, we're going to want to turn the kill switch to the off position. Because this also shuts off the fuel. Alright, so to remove the fuel line, it appears that somebody's changed out this line. It's a braided line. We're going to want to remove this one clamp here using a pair of pliers. Now to remove the fuel line, we're just going to want to take a flathead and slowly pry up on the line. And it will eventually start working its way loose. And a little bit of fuel is going to come out, but not much. So I have removed the plate just to better show you guys. You're going to want to unhook these two overfill lines from the engine I'm going to unhook this governor spring here just to get it out of the way so that the fuel lines here do not disturb it now we're simply just going to pull the carburetor off of these two studs here alright so I've got the carburetor in a small dish like this and what you're going to want to do is remove the small 10 millimeter bowl nut from the carburetor and I can already tell just by looking at the bottom of this that we're going to have a very dirty carburetor and that right there is why you want a container as you can see there was quite a bit of fuel that came out. So I'm looking at the bottom of the bowl and it looks pretty filthy. It's all gummed up. If you look at the fuel that came out of the carburetor you can see there is quite a bit of dirt in it. Luckily there is no water. So we're going to remove the float. Simply just remove the pin and the float and needle should come out. And the needle will stay on the float. Now what you're going to want to do is there is a small jet inside of there and you're going to want to remove that. To remove it you're going to want a screwdriver like this and it has to have a flat edge. Most screwdrivers widen at the tip like this. Well you're going to need one with a flat edge so that you can easily stick the screwdriver into the passageway without damaging the threads. Now that we've unscrewed the jet, here it is, it has a very small hole in there and you want to be sure that that is clear. And if you give the carburetor a bit of a tap on the table, the emulsions tube will come out. You want to be sure that all of the passageways on the emulsions tube are clear and this one is not. To check if the jet is clear, simply just run a piece of wire through it like this and you can see that this one is clear. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean the carburetor body. What you would want to do is you'd want to spray carburetor cleaner in all of these passageways here. Inside this passageway, through this inlet, and also through the emulsions tube and the jet. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting this in my ultrasonic cleaner. And I'll get back to you after the bath is done. Alright, so we've now got everything clean. And you can see that's much better. What you want to do is you want to make sure that these passageways here on the carburetor are clean. Make sure you spray some carburetor cleaner in there. 
You can see the emulsions tube looks a lot better. It's clear you can see right through it. Same goes for this jet. You might not be able to see very through it on camera, but it's definitely clean. We're going to start by putting the emulsions tube in, just like this. And next, we'll install the jet. Tighten that up. Alright, once you have the emulsions tube and the jet installed, make sure you install the float. Just like that. Put the pin in. You can see the bowl is really clean. We're going to install it just like this. And we're going to put the bowl nut on. Snug it up. Alright, so now that we've got the carburetor installed like this, we're going to reinstall the overflow lines. And make sure that you clip them back into their proper holster. Now we're reinstalling the fuel line. That just simply mounts onto the carburetor like that. And you're going to want to install the fuel clip just like so. We're now reinstalling the governor spring. Just like so. Ensure that everything's moving like it should. We'll now reinstall the plate that you've left dangling by the positive crankcase ventilation tube. Now we'll reinstall the two 8mm nuts. Alright, so we'll go ahead and see if it'll start up. Turn it to the on position, make sure that the choke is on. Give it a pull. Alright, so now that we've got the engine to run to where I like it, we're going to reinstall the air filter housing. All that it takes is the four Phillips head screws. Make sure that you align your choke properly. Alright, so I've got my grinder hooked up to the generator, and we're going to see how it responds under load. So I'm happy with this repair, everything's working the way it should.